Chapter 9, Zion's Redemption We believe in the literal gathering of Israel and in the restoration of the Ten Tribes, and that Zion will be built upon this the American continent. Tenth Article of Faith The whole American continent is the land of Zion, Jackson County, Missouri, is the center stake of Zion, and the pure in heart are the people of Zion. But at the present time the land of Zion is burdened with corruption and crime, the center stake of Zion, has no temple and is surrounded with Gentiles, and the people of Zion are few and far between. But God has been seeking to gather his saints that he may elevate them enough spiritually and temporally, to bring about a Zion in the land and a Zion in his people. That Zion cannot come about except by obedience to the principle of gathering. I repeat, our mission is to preach the gospel, and then to gather the people who embrace it. And why? That there might be a nucleus formed, a people gathered who would be under the inspiration of the Almighty, and who would be willing to listen to the voice of God a people who would receive and obey his word, when it was made known to them. And this people in their gathered condition are called Zion, or the pure in heart. John Taylor, J.D. 23 262 God has always blessed his elect spiritually, so they would have the will and desire to redeem Zion. When we first receive the spirit of the gospel we receive great joy therein, great peace, and great satisfaction to our minds, and we are carried away in the spirit to behold the beauties of Zion, and to contemplate the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Our brethren and sisters far away among the nations, when they received the gospel, and the spirit of revelation came upon them, delighted to contemplate the gathering of the saints, it was a matter of joy to them to dream about it, and think about it, when they would awake from their slumbers. They would reflect upon it through the day, and talk about it in their prayer meetings, and in their prayer circles at home. The subject of gathering to Zion was constantly before them if they lived so as to enjoy the spirit of their religion. This spirit caused their hearts constantly to rejoice. It was not the journey across the plains that gave them joy, but it was the contemplation of Zion in its beauty and glory, for they could not see the troubles and disappointments, perplexities and vexations they would have to pass through in gathering to Zion. Nor did they think of the hardships they would have to endure after they were gathered. So the ancients viewed the glory of Zion in the last days. Brigham Young, J.D. 12 162. President Young continued to explain the work of building up Zion but, how few of the saints would prove worthy of that grand undertaking. It is true this is Zion North and South America are Zion, and the land where the Lord commenced his work, and where he commenced he will finish. This is the land of Zion, but we are not yet prepared to go and establish the center stake of Zion. The Lord tried this in the first place. He called the people together to the place where the new Jerusalem and the great temple will be built, and where he will prepare for the city of Enoch. And he gave revelation after revelation, but the people could not abide them, and the church was scattered and peeled, and the people hunted from place to place till, finally, they were driven into the mountains, and here we are. Now, it is for you and me to prepare to return back again, not to our fatherland, in many cases, but to return east, and by and by to build up the center stake of Zion. We are not prepared to do this now, but we are here to learn until we are of one heart and of one mind in the things of this life. Do all the Latter-day Saints arrive at this? No, they have not. Our former experience has proved this. Of the great many who have been baptized into this church, but few have been able to abide the word of the Lord. They have fallen out on the right and on the left, and have foundered by the way, and a few have gathered together. Will these be prepared to enter the celestial kingdom? Some of them will be, and will become kings and priests, but not all of these, only a portion of them. They do not know what to do with the revelations, commandments and blessings of God. J.D. 11 324 for nearly 150 years the saints in general have proved themselves to be unqualified to accomplish the redemption of Zion and the building of the new Jerusalem, with its magnificent temple. It seems we are further from that major event than ever before. In the early days of the church the leaders pleaded with the saints to come and build up Zion. But today the leaders plead for the members to build up the branches. Zion will never be redeemed under the present attitude of building and strengthening the missions around the world or among the wicked. We are spiritually immature people, generally incapable of the celestial laws required to accomplish that work. We have never fully understood the temporal requirements of building Zion and the gathering of Israel. Are we prepared to establish the Zion that the Lord designs to build up? I have many times asked the questions, where is the man that knows how to lay the first rock for the wall, that is to surround the new Jerusalem or the Zion of God on the earth? Where is the man who knows how to construct the first gate of the city, 
Where is the man who understands how to build up the kingdom of God in its purity, and to prepare for Zion to come down to meet it? Well, says one, I thought the Lord was going to do this, so he is if we will let him. That is what we want. We want the people to be willing for the Lord to do it, but he will do it by means. He will not send his angels to gather up the rock to build up the new Jerusalem. He will not send his angels from the heavens to go to the mountains to cut the timber, and make it into lumber to adorn the city of Zion. He has called upon us to do this work, and if we will let him work by, through, and with us, he can accomplish it, otherwise we shall fall short, and shall never have the honor of building up Zion on the earth. JD 13 313 This generation of Israelites may be compared to the first generation of Israelites, under the direction of Moses, who had to pass away until another generation came, who were more willing to live the laws of God. Eventually, in this dispensation, the Lord will raise up a few faithful men, upon whom he can pour out his spiritual and temporal fortunes, towards the redemption of Zion. They shall have temporal powers such as no king of Israel could ever equal. Orson Pratt was commanded by the Lord to prophesy, here is one of his prophecies concerning Zion. It was promised that we should have a land as an inheritance, but we were commanded of God to purchase the land. Now, when the time comes for purchasing this land, we will have means. How this means will be brought about it is not for me to say. Perhaps the Lord will open up mines containing gold and silver, or in some other way as seemeth to him best, wealth will be poured into the laps of the Latter-day Saints, till they will scarcely know what to do with it. I will hear again prophecy on the strength of former revelation, that there are no people on the face of the whole globe, not even excepting London, Paris, New York, or any of the great mercantile cities of the globe there, are no people now upon the face of the earth, so rich as the Latter-day Saints will be in a few years to come having their millions, therefore they will purchase the land, build up cities, towns and villages, build a great capital city, at headquarters, in Jackson County, Missouri. Orson Pratt, J.D. 21 136. Has he not told us, in the early rise of this church, if we would do his will, and seek the riches that is the will of the Father to bestow upon us, we should be the richest of all people, for the riches of eternity should be given to us, and it must needs be saith the Lord, that the riches of the earth are mine to give. They are all his. How easily he could turn all the riches of the earth into our hands, if we were only prepared to receive them and use them according to his will. But he knows the time to hasten them, and he knows the secret intents of our hearts as a people. He knows whether we are prepared to use the riches of the earth to build up his kingdom or not, and he will withhold them, until the time shall fully come for him to bless us according to the promise he has made until we shall be prepared to receive them. We shall have riches then in great plenty. Gold will be so plentiful that we may find no use for it only to make culinary and other utensils. We may use some of it for paving our streets, and for whatsoever is necessary. We can use the gold and silver which we have not toiled for in the gold mines of California and Australia to collect for ourselves, we shall have that which others have labored for, but were unworthy because of wickedness to enjoy. Orson Pratt, J.D. 2 263. The true use of gold is for paving streets, covering houses and making culinary dishes, and when the saints shall have preached the gospel, raised grain and built up cities enough, the Lord will open up a way for a supply of gold, to the perfect satisfaction of his people. Until that time, let them not be over-anxious, for the treasures of the earth are in the Lord's storehouse, and he will open the doors thereof when and where he pleases. Brigham Young. Brigham Young at Home, page 252. Zion must have a people who are free from the world's present evils. When temporal power is sufficient for the saints to control their own laws administered according to the will of God, then we shall be called the people of Zion. But if we had our ways, as Latter-day Saints, there would be no drinking saloons, there would be no houses of ill fame, there would be no gambling saloons, there would be nothing of this character permitted in our cities or in our settlements. We would not only be free from litigation and strife, as I have said we are as a people, but we would be free from those other evils, those other vices. George Q. Cannon, J.D. 24 134. We are here also to build up a Zion unto our God, wherein his laws can be taught, the principles of eternal truth be communicated, the relationship and communication open between the heavens and the earth, and men placed in a position whereby they will be enabled to act intelligently, in regard to all matters pertaining to this world. 
as well as to the world that is to come. John Taylor, J.D. 2667. The laws and principles of Zion are foreign to the people of the world and the laws and principles of the world should be foreign to the Latter-day Saints. Hence, it is necessary for the saints of God to rid themselves of all wicked practices, custom, and roles. They must re-establish the laws and principles of heaven on earth. It will be a major miracle to gather even the elect of Israel, and to cleanse the land of Zion and the people of Zion, from all worldly iniquities. When that is accomplished, Zion will be redeemed, 